Welcome back, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Corvette Edge Garage. We are working on episode number 10. Man, this is going to be the third episode that we're just strictly working on the supercharger, period. Wow. Uh, I'm pretty, I'm, I'm stoked, man. The boy's pheromone level suggests he wants to mate with the female. Uh, this episode, we are going to work on the fuel uh, system setup. Uh, we're going to install the FMU on the firewall and hook up the lines to it. And we're going to uh, install the external fuel pump um, and hook up the wiring for all that. Uh, and that should pretty much take care of the fuel going into the engine to accommodate the power of the supercharger. So uh, this is different. The hood's closed. That's just a rare occasion. This hood's always open. Uh, so it kind of gives you an idea how, how, how jacked up this uh, car, car is. Uh, but anyway, uh, let's go ahead and get started on that right after this. Well, welcome back everyone um, well the first thing we're going to get started on is we're going to get started on uh, installing the FMU so uh, we're going to um, uh, install that FMU on the uh, um, firewall and run the line to the um, uh, the fuel rail and to the tank um, unfortunately I have this monstrosity of emission equipment on <laughs> and I got to take all that off and I got a feeling that I'm going to end up having to take off the throttle body to put the bunny back in the box so, uh, which I'm not liking that too much uh, but that, it, it is what it is uh, but anyway Listen, we can do this the easy way or the hard way um, I guess we'll just have to just get to it that has got to go to work well, here's the uh, fuel management system that comes with the uh, Pro Charger kit. Um, as you see, it already has a bracket on there, and it, it goes on the firewall. I got I got to admit that uh, uh, Pro Charger they didn't. Uh, I mean, they they this is pretty detailed uh, as far as the installment. I mean, uh, you know, for a company to go out of the way to do something like that. Uh, it, it, it's a good company. Uh, here's the uh, vacuum that's going to be going on the Pelham, Pelham. and um, uh, let's go ahead and install the radius on it. I don't know, but I got to give Procharger a call anyway because it looks like there's a screw missing on top there, uh, and it's probably just a cap. But um, I would prefer, prefer to have the screw in there um, to keep the dust out. Or anything flying around in the engine bay, uh, so we're going to give them a call on that one and find out if that's uh, the way it's supposed to be, and see what we can do to rectify that. In the meantime, I'm going to go ahead and put this on. Let's do it. So we got two bolts, one there on the bottom, uh, and another bolt that's on the uh, retainer. So we get the uh, bottom one out first, and this one is only going to be a 10 millimeter. This one's going to be a uh, 13 millimeter. Now we're getting ready to uh, line everything up to bolt it on down. It was a little tight, but uh, I finally managed to get it on. And there we have it. I just love the way it looks like it was made to be there. Thanks, Pro Charger. Appreciate it. Now to hook up the lines, as you can see, I have to remove that monstrosity of emission equipment to get out of the way. I'm getting ready to pull the first part of the emission uh, uh, equipment. I'll tell you, it's pretty tight in there. I hate it. Okay, here comes the second part of the emission equipment. So that should pretty much clear some of the path. 
So now I'm getting ready to pull the coolant bypass line. Originally, GM had it uh, going through the throttle body, but I bypassed it. Uh, I, it was not necessary. I don't think they did it for emissions, to tell you the truth. Okay, uh, now we're working on getting rid of the uh, throttle body to make some more room. And even when pulling that throttle body off, there's still, there's still a tight area to work with. So it was a little frustrating here, uh, trying to get in there and uh, get these uh, lines hooked up. Um, like I said, it's it's just not just it's a Corvette. There's just not no room. So I'm pretty much done with it now. And as you can see, this is what I needed to do uh, as far as hooking up these lines. So the FMU is definitely now complete. And uh, let's move on to the next, the fuel pump. Uh, so, um, we have a wiring here with a relay, and uh, the Pro Charger did provide enough wire to reach the battery. Um, and we have the fuel pump here, it's a DW250 uh, IL, and um, the rest of the parts that uh, needed to um, complete this uh, install here. This is going to be, uh, this is a bracket for the fuel pump. That goes right behind the um, license plate, so um, you you won't be able to, you won't see the you won't see that fuel pump. But I'm glad it's back in the back. But like I said, from what I understand, uh, these fuel pumps are 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 loud. But I mean, this is not a Pro Charger one, so um, the DW250. Uh, it's not Pro Charger, so. Oh, maybe, yeah, uh, maybe the DW is acquired, we hope. I, I got to sleep for it anyway, just in case. Um, anyway, there's the uh, bracket and the clamps, uh, and uh, we're all set here. So, uh, like I said, Pro Charger didn't miss anything. They're, uh, uh, it's pretty detailed, uh, their kit. Uh, they, 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 I, I got to hand it to these guys. They really did their job, they did their homework. Anyway, uh, let's go ahead and install it now. Okay, uh, we got, uh, looks like we, we got to take this plate off, or, or this back, backing plate off. Looks like we have four screws and they're T15. So this turned out to be real easy. Uh, probably the, the one thing that's been the easiest part of this whole uh, installation. Um, my four bolts and that's it. Uh, the two uh, bolts are T15s and uh, come, it comes right on out. Okay, well, I pulled the fuel cap off and I'm putting a paper towel in, uh, in the fuel cap inlet. So that way uh, when I, I'm, I got to pull the uh, spill spill tray out, you know, and with it being dirty, I didn't want uh, any dirt to fall into the fuel tank as I was pulling it out. So it fought me too. So it's all good. Next, and now I need to remove the uh, license plate, and you know, or you can see I'm already strutting uh, the Pro Charger license plate frame. As far as the blurring on the license plate, I read somewhere where uh, California has some law that you can't show it in pictures or videos or something like that. I caused the revolution. You betray the law. law. Okay, there's just what it looks like. 37 years of dirt buildup. Um, I'm going to need to clean this up uh, before I do anything. I just can't stand working in dirt. Um, and 37 years. I tell you what, that Corvette looks pretty good for 37 years. Let me clean this up. Wax on. Wax off. And that cleaned up pretty good. Uh, now I can uh, start working on the vehicle. i uh, just not into dirt. Never was, never will be. Uh, all good now. I love the smell of napalm in the morning. So here I'm going to um, unloosen the bolt that's holding that support bracket. Now this took me a little bit to try to figure out because I, 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 you know, I'm holding the bracket in place over there, trying to figure out how the hell they installed the bracket. Uh, finally, I just, you know, well, Pro Charger wouldn't, you know, sent me something that I couldn't figure out or wasn't right. So I ended up looking in the back, and sure enough, there it was, a bolt back there hiding. Couldn't see it from where I was at. 
Now I had to uh, drop the spare tire and pull it out of the way. Um, trying to get to this bolt, there was just no possible way for me to reach behind that bracket from the rear to tighten that bolt down. And so I went this route and found it uh, a little bit easier, still tight, but uh, it was I was able to take care of business. And that's how she looks like with the bracket installed. So now I'm going to take the pump and kind of mock it up there, see if I got room, uh, and make sure that it's not, uh, uh, the license plate is not going to hit on it. So it looks like everything looks good. So uh, at this point, um, I'm just waiting for the sleeve for the uh, fuel pump. Uh, then I can get started back on this thing and hook the lines up. Uh, I'll probably be starting to run the wiring here before I get to sleeve. So uh, let's move on. Okay, as you can see, the fuel pump is installed. Uh, unfortunately, while recording, uh, I did not hit the record button when I was filming all this uh, this process. And therefore, when I thought I was recording, I was actually turning the recorder off. So... Uh, my apologies for that, but it's it's pretty self-explanatory by just looking at it. Um, this is a DW250 uh, high flow pump. It also uh, has the internal pump. They work uh, simultaneously, so to speak, um, which will get the fuel up to the front of the motor. And if I ever decide to go more boost, uh, according with this kit, it should get up to 8 PSI, but anything after that, uh, I will probably go ahead and pull that uh, external pump out and uh, put in a wall barrel 350 internal uh, for the fueling system. Now, now, that's not to say that there's anything wrong with this the way it's set up, but, uh, I mean, back in the day, this is how it was set up before all the new stuff started coming out. Uh, but uh, more uh, more boost is going to require more fuel, and I'd rather have a dedicated pump uh, to uh, uh, inside the tank to uh, fuel that uh, supercharger. Um, for the sake of the project, we're going to keep going the way it's supposed to be installed. This amendment is that cute. Okay, there's a double clamp here showing the output line of the. Uh, uh, fuel uh, which is coming uh, out of the uh, tank uh, the second line is actually going into the um, uh, uh, the uh, line to the engine up on top there and in, 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 in a couple of minutes here we'll go up on top to kind of show you what uh, uh, how I connected all that uh, what's the deal with the double uh, clamps well uh, back in that era, they used a double clamp to show the output of the tank, which uh, is actually the fuel pump uh, line. So uh, the lenses are in, and I'll tell you right now, that was a pain in the ass to try to get those lenses back in there with that fuel pump in the way. But I managed to do it anyway, and right now uh, there is your finished results uh, the only one that's uh, gonna know that there's anything back there is myself and the subscribers um, but uh, you know it just it just goes to show you how clean uh, this kit is uh, you know um, uh, it's uh, it's it's pretty it's pretty neat I, I, I'm loving this kit so uh, all right let's uh, go up on top and show you how we connected the lines all right, moving up to the top, uh, as you can see, there's a new line that goes into the uh, tank that's coming from the right-hand side of the fuel pump. Uh, the line from the left-hand side of the fuel pump is going into the double clamp hose that actually goes up to the front of the motor. Okay, uh, Below that is the wiring uh, from the uh, uh, relay going into the positive uh, uh, line of the internal fuel pump. Uh, once the relay engages, then the external fuel pump should be doing its job. So we pretty much reached the end of this uh, episode. Um, uh, now we're just going to go ahead and install the uh, lid. Um, and the only thing left is to run that uh, uh, line all the way up to the battery and start testing everything, making sure everything works. Um, everything is hooked up correctly, so there shouldn't be no reason why it wouldn't. You forgot one very important thing, mate. 
I'm Captain Jack Sparrow. Well, there you have it. Uh, fuel pumps installed, FMU's installed, all the lines are connected. Uh, the only thing left is to run that power line all the way up to the battery. And I'll probably show that one over on uh, episode number 11. Because uh, uh, I'm needing to get this car up a little higher. Uh, unfortunately, uh, sliding around in there is not helping my back any. So um, uh, I'm going get to get it up higher. Rolling around underneath would be better than me sliding. Because I'm causing uh, uh, extra pain that I don't need. So... Uh, that's gonna we're gonna work on that next uh, for the next episode and episode number 11 is going to consist of uh, dropping the oil pan uh, putting a hole in it tapping in a uh, uh, oil return line uh, from the supercharger to the oil tank it's uh, or the oil uh, pan uh, actually going to be running uh, the same oil as we do the engine and I kind of like it that way because I'm the one that's running the oil in it and I already know what the type of oil I like to use for stuff like this. Of course, synthetic, of course. So uh, I like that idea. So until then, hey, thank you for watching. Uh, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. If you haven't, uh, don't forget to ring that bell. That will let you know all the videos that I push out. And the last thing is, hey, hit that like button if you like the contents. You know, that lets me know that uh, you do. Uh, and if you have any comments, feel free to uh, comment, you know, on what, whatever I'm doing on the project. Uh, if you think there's something not right or you need uh, explanation on, feel free to comment. No big deal. Until then, thank you and uh, have a good day. We'll see you in the next episode. Thank you. That wasn't flying. That was falling with style.